Don James brought his fourth Husky team to Pasadena for the 1991 Rose Bowl, his second meeting against Iowa of the Big Ten Conference. Husky Hall of Famer and All-Pro Warren Moon, who quarterbacked the first James Rose Bowl team, was back on the Washington sideline. And like Moon, sophomore quarterback Mark Brunel was ready for an MVP performance. The Husky defense and special teams picked up where they left off at the end of the regular season. Washington's first points came when Andy Mason blocked this Iowa punt. Dana Hall grabbed it and dashed 27 yards for a touchdown and a 10-0 Husky lead. Washington showed its defensive prowess early. Hawkeye quarterback Matt Rogers spent much of this day under pressure from the likes of Mark Jones and second-team All-America Steve Emptman. Doak Walker Award winner Greg Lewis collected the 15th 100-yard rushing effort of his career with 128 against the Hawkeyes, 44 of them here, which set up a Travis Hansen field goal. Los Angeles native Charles Mincy excited friends and fans with his second quarter pass interception. The first touchdown of his career gave Washington a 19-7 advantage. The Huskies exploded for 23 points in the second quarter. Fourth and one at the Iowa five, and Brunel keeps around the left side for six. The assault continued on the next drive. Brunel took the Huskies back to the end zone in less than a minute, hooking up with split end Mario Bailey for a 22-yard touchdown pass just before the half. 33-7 Washington. The Huskies widened the lead in the third quarter when Brunel dashed to the end zone for the second time. 20 yards and a 39-14 Husky lead. Washington held off a late fourth quarter Hawkeye charge. Brunel continued to marvel. The game's most valuable player tossed his second touchdown pass to Bailey with five minutes left, sewing up a 46-34 victory over Iowa. While this was a splendid finish to 1990, center Ed Cunningham looked to the future. I just went in and told the guys, when we come back here next year, well, if we come back here next year, we're going to play for the big one. We're not playing for just Rose Bowl championship. I want to play for number one rock on my finger. The Washington Huskies, champions of the Pacific 10 Conference and champions of the 77th Rose Bowl. The 1991 Washington Huskies were hungrier than ever and capped the perfect season with a national championship. I felt that uh, if, as I looked at the schedule, that, that uh, this was before the Mark Burnell injury, that we would probably go into uh, 10 games favorite and one even or underdog. I was thinking of the Nebraska game. And that's from the start of the season. Now, obviously, when you play it and the, the, the change comes every week, the odds change. Uh, uh, teams that play well, obviously get uh, get higher rankings and all, but I, I thought we would probably be as good or better than at least 10 of the opponents. The fourth-ranked Huskies began the 1991 campaign in Palo Alto in an all-important conference game against Stanford. After a scoreless first quarter, Washington's offense got on track. Jay Berry's 11-yard dash to the end zone broke the ice and began a 21-point second-quarter outburst. The Husky defense shut down the Cardinal offense, forcing six turnovers. All-America Steve Emptman picked off a pass in the third quarter. The Purple Storm defense held Stanford to 28 yards rushing. Jaime Fields, a junior from Linwood, California, corralled this sack, one of 48 the Huskies collected in 1991. Redshirt sophomore quarterback Billy Joe Hobart, making his first start in the Purple and Gold of Washington, fired two touchdown passes. This one to his old Puyallup High teammate, Joe Crawley. The Huskies were up 28-7 early in the fourth quarter. Barry's 23-yard touchdown run put it out of reach as Washington recorded its first victory, a 42-7 decision over a low bowl bound Stanford. They had opportunities that they didn't hit on early, and uh, uh, you know we were fortunate to you know to get a couple of real good breaks and in, in score, especially the one right before the half that put us up 21-7. Then I think that uh, in the fourth quarter, I think we got control of the game. I, I think. Uh, 
They, I don't know if it was conditioning or just what it was, but uh, there wasn't any question in my mind that uh, you know, we were the better team in the fourth quarter. I was not sure of that for the first three. The Huskies had two weeks to prepare for a nationally televised intersectional showdown with ninth-ranked Nebraska. Washington overcame adversity, spotting the Cornhuskers a 21-9 lead. The Husky defense kept it within reach. All-conference linebacker David Hoffman had eight tackles, a sack, and an interception. Hobart rallied Washington, engineering four touchdown drives in the final 16 minutes. Bean O'Brien, who gained 139 yards, raced 15 late in the third quarter to pull the purple and gold within five. The Huskies took the lead on an eight-yard pass to Orlando McKay. Two of his earlier grabs for scores had been wiped out by penalty. It was 22-21 Washington. Hobart, who earned Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Week honors, added to the lead with a three-yard keeper. And Jay Berry capped the scoring with an exciting 81-yard run. Washington ran up 618 yards of total offense, the most against the Cornhuskers in 35 years. The Huskies were 2-0, following a 36-21 victory over the Big 8 champion. If you can get a game like that in, that big, on the road early, I think it gave us a lot of confidence, because you never can tell what's going to happen the rest of the year. But uh, that, was, uh, that was one of the, you know, the great uh, road victories that we've ever had. Washington improved to 3-0 with a lopsided 53-point victory over another Big 8 foe, previously unbeaten Kansas State. This was the longest pass play from scrimmage for the Huskies in 1991, a 71-yarder from Holbert to senior Mario Bailey. The Pac-10's Offensive Player of the Year caught seven passes for 157 yards and a pair of touchdowns. The Husky sack attack was in high gear, eight in all, Two-time all-conference linebacker Donald Jones, a senior from Gladys, Virginia, had his best day as a Husky. Four tackles for loss, three of them sacks. 1991 Rose Bowl MVP Mark Brunell made his return in one of the most emotional moments of the season. In action months ahead of schedule, after major knee surgery during spring practice. Bino Bryant became the most prolific punt returner in Husky history on this day, eclipsing Steve Bramwell's 25-year-old mark for career punt return yardage. Bino busted loose for 53 yards and a touchdown. His fourth as a punt returner, that tied a Pac-10 record. Kansas State was a lot better than a lot of people wanted to give them credit for. You know, we defeated them fairly handily, but uh, they could really throw the ball. And they were well drilled and they made a lot of progress. But I believe they beat uh, a couple of big eight teams in, in Kansas and in Missouri, and, uh, and they almost beat Nebraska. The Huskies jumped one spot to third in the polls as Pac-10 play resumed with a visit from Arizona. The Wildcats moved backward much of this game thanks to 19 tackles for loss by the Huskies. Steve Entman had 10 tackles, four for loss, and a sack, and earned Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week honors. Mario Bailey lit up the scoreboard with this dazzling catch and run, eluding Arizona tacklers en route to a 29-yard touchdown play in the second quarter. Cornerback Walter Bailey, a junior from Portland, Oregon, picked off this pass, dashed 24 yards to the end zone. He led the Huskies with seven interceptions, returned two for scores. Mario showed his athleticism with this diving one-handed grab from Brunel. Bryant found the end zone with the help of the Pac-10's most honored offensive line. Morris Trophy winner Lincoln Kennedy paved the way for Bryant on this 13-yard touchdown run. Washington was 4-0 following a 54-0 victory over Arizona. I think we cut two teams this year at a good time, and, and Arizona was one and, and uh, Oregon was the other. We cut them uh, with a lot of injuries, and, uh, and I think that Arizona was without a doubt not the same team that they were when they opened up with Ohio State and, and we were fortunate and our guys came to play and, uh, and we had a, a fairly easy victory. First year head coach Gary Pinkle came to Seattle to face his mentor when Toledo visited Husky Stadium. Mario Bailey had his finest outing in purple and gold. Six receptions for 170 yards, three of them for touchdowns. Bailey caught a Pac-10 best 17 touchdown passes and established new Husky single season and career marks for touchdown receptions. Washington showed why it led the nation in defense much of the season. Honorable mention all-conference pick Jaime Fields forced this fumble and Jim Clifford recovered. DeMarco Farr had two of his five tackles for loss in 1991 against Toledo. One of the season's most unusual plays developed on a passing effort from Mark Brunell to Jay Barry. Barry reversed his field, 
covered 32 yards to widen the Huskies' lead in the third quarter. Freshman sensation Napoleon Kaufman excited Husky fans every time he touched the football. This 13-yard blitz brought the house to its feet. Washington was 5-0 after its second straight shutout victory. You can never project where the big games will be at the start of the season. And, and basically what has to happen is you have to win and then that particular opponent has to win and, uh, and Cal was undefeated, had, had two really great come from behind victories over UCLA and Arizona and that really makes a football team. When you can do that, your kids start, they work harder, they prepare harder and they just get better, they start to believe and uh, so that was a big game. The Rose Bowl was at stake when third ranked Washington met eighth ranked California in Berkeley. This game went down to the final play. Junior tailback Jay Berry from North Glen, Colorado rushed for a career-high 143 yards. He earned Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Week honors for his efforts against the Golden Bears. Berry followed the block of senior co-captain and all-conference center Ed Cunningham to the end zone and gave Washington a 17-10 lead just before the half. Sophomore defensive end Andy Mason from Longview charged through with one of Washington's five sacks. Game tied 17-17 early fourth quarter Bino Bryant spurts free, turns on his Rockets and goes 65 yards for the game-winning points. 24-17 Washington. After a penalty took another Husky touchdown off the scoreboard, the defense had to hold, and they did. Final play of the game, Walter Bailey breaks up the pass play in the end zone, and the Huskies take a huge step toward Pasadena with a victory over Citrus Bowl bound California. Whenever we needed to play, when things got a little scary out there, Bino came through, and I think that's a a real credit to his competitive instinct that uh, you know some athletes can just do that and, and Bino's had a good year of that. The Huskies continued their role against Northwest rival Oregon. Washington blocked three punts during the 1991 season, two against the Ducks. Tommy Smith, a junior from Lancaster, California, snuffed out this effort and it led to the Huskies' first score. Mario Bailey's 11th score of the season eclipsed a 25-year-old school record held by Dave Williams for touchdown receptions in a single season. Steve Entman had four tackles, two of them for loss. The junior from Cheney finished with a season-high 19 and a half tackles for loss, too shy of the school record. Sophomore place kicker Travis Hansen, an all-academic Pac-10 selection, booted his longest field goal of the season against Oregon from 44 yards away. Second-team All-Pac-10 safety Shane Palakoa, a junior from Marysville, picked off three passes during the season. He returned this one 32 yards to set up another Husky score. Washington upended Oregon 29-7. The Huskies were 7-0. They had a, a tremendous amount of quarterback injuries, and uh, I think they eventually started five different players, and all five were hurt. Uh, and so, you know, that's you know, when you have a, a defense like ours and can play an inexperienced quarterback, you have really got an advantage. And then uh, the other side of it was that their defensive line was banged up, and uh, they had a very good defense, a very good defensive line. But again, it, you know, if you take uh, three or four starters out of the defense, it's it's a whole different unit. Arizona State visited Washington for the annual homecoming game, and alums left happy. Pac-10 All-Academic First Team selection Orlando McKay, a senior from Mesa, Arizona, corralled this first quarter touchdown catch to fuel the Husky offense. Second Team All-Pac-10 tight end Aaron Pierce became a vital cog in Washington's attack. An able blocker, he also demonstrated fine pass catching ability. Colbert became the second sophomore quarterback in as many seasons to guide Washington to the Rose Bowl. He earned honorable mention all Pac-10 honors, completing 61% of his passes. He threw for 22 touchdowns and rushed for five. The Hobart to Bailey connection clicked seven times against ASU, once for a touchdown. Bailey racked up 139 receiving yards against the Sun Devils. Washington celebrated homecoming with its eighth victory of the season, 44-16. The Huskies had not beaten USC in Los Angeles since 1980. The dry spell ended in early November. Bino Bryant's homecoming was a memorable one. He turned in a performance worthy of Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Week honors, a career-high 158 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. Defensive co-captain Donald Jones throttled down for five tackles against the Trojans, two for loss, and a sack. Washington went to its bag of tricks in the second quarter. Honorable mention all Pac-10 tailback Matt Jones from Portland, Oregon carried on the fake punt. First down Huskies. 
Six plays later, Bryant was back in the end zone with help from Chris Rongan, Lincoln Kennedy, and all Pac-10 second team tackles to Pele Malamala. Big day for linebacker David Hoffman from San Jose. Ten tackles, five for loss, and a pair of sacks. He was the Pac-10's defensive player of the week. Washington improved to 9-0 with a 14-3 victory over Southern Cal. We've seen this ourselves. We've gone into SC game and we were decided underdog and our kids play lights out. You know, they, they sometimes upset them. Uh, two times down there, the last two times we're down, we went for a goal for two to, to beat them. And, and comparing the teams, we were not as good as them. Uh, two Rose Bowl teams. And, and I suspected the same thing. You know, go down there and, and they, they could play. They proved they could play against Penn State. And they had some young players, uh, had some, you know, the deficiencies here and there. But uh, they could get up and have a marvelous group of athletes and they played us very well. But again, Bino Bryant came through when we needed him. The Huskies' final road trip of the regular season was to Corvallis to meet Oregon State. The Beavers ran the wishbone, and the purple and gold stormed to the football. Jaime Fields batted away the pitch. The play resulted in a safety. Washington scored on six of its eight first-half possessions. Hobart, 14 of 19 passing, four touchdowns, three to all-conference wide receiver Mario Bailey. Dana Hall, an all-conference cornerback from Diamond Bar, California, blocked this punt to set up another short Husky drive. Steve Entman and co-captain Brett Collins teamed up for this tackle for loss, one of 13 the Husky defense registered against Oregon State. Collins also earned all Pac-10 honorable mention recognition. Senior linebacker Chico Fraley, an all-conference first team pick, recorded seven of the team record 129 tackles for loss. He picked up two of them in Corvallis. The Huskies routed Oregon State 58 to six. In doing so, they clinched the Pacific 10 Conference Championship and their second straight trip to the Rose Bowl. The credit there goes back to the players and that they didn't overlook Oregon State. You know, Oregon State hadn't won a game, but we also had the Cal game the week before that video, and, and they had the ball 40 minutes to Cal's 20, and, and both offenses scored three touchdowns in the game. So, so we knew that uh, you know if we get ready to to go down there and just think it's going to be a cakewalk and get back on our heels and then let that wishbone get rolling, it, uh, we'll be in for a long day. But a real credit to our players that they got ready to play. Coaches had a marvelous plan and, uh, and they went down there and just took it to them. Washington jumped to number two in the national polls in time for the 84th playing of the Apple Cup. The Huskies jumped in front of the Cougars on their first possession. Hobart hooked up with McKay for 69 yards and a touchdown. The Husky defense stifled the Cougars in the second period. All Pac-10 honorable mention middle guard Tyrone Rogers and sophomore DeMarco Farr team up to stop this play. Billy Joe tossed to fullback Darius Turner, a junior from Gardena, California. He high-stepped it in for six, and Washington was up for good. Donald Jones bust through for a sack, one of seven for Washington this day. Second team all-conference cornerback Walter Bailey picked off this pass, returned at 27 yards for a touchdown. The opportunistic Huskies turned 36 opponent turnovers into 120 points. Senior co-captain Mario Bailey from Seattle's Franklin High saluted friends, fans, and foes following this touchdown grab. The second quarter assault continued when Jaime Fields wrapped up another two points with a safety. The Huskies went on a 29-point run to put it out of reach. Honorable mention all Pac-10 tailback Vino Bryant pranced 21 yards for six more. The Huskies' leading rusher closed with a 127-yard effort against the Cougars. Mario Bailey's last performance in front of the hometown fans was a spectacular one. Outstretched for six, Bailey led the Pac-10 with 1,037 receiving yards. Mark Brunel's keeper punctuated a 56-21 Apple Cup win, the Huskies' third straight victory over the Cougars. The conference championship was settled, but uh, you know, to stay in the national race, plus the fact that it is the Apple Cup, and uh, uh, everybody knows about rival games, that you, you tend to throw out the, the records and the stats, and, and the Washington, Washington State players have really played us very well in my 17 years, very hard, and the and so I, I think that our players, again, they respected Washington State, uh, the, the ability they had, and the fact they would come in here and play very hard. And uh, uh, they put up a lot of yards against us, but uh, it was a great victory for us. Washington produced its first unbeaten season since 1915. Following the Apple Cup victory, the Huskies paid tribute to friends and teammates. There are two reasons for doing this today. One is for the coaches and his team 
to thank you people for the great support. We appreciate it. The other to honor the 17 seniors for their contributions to the Husky football program with one last run up the Husky Stadium Tunnel. The key issue was that this was the team that was involved in the 88 season. Young players, uh, not, uh, not pleased with the way we played, not pleased with the record and the fact we didn't get in the ball game. And they had, uh, you know, they had made up their mind that this wasn't going to happen and they went to work and, and they, they made great strides in a lot of areas, in their strength and in their quickness and their speed and the, uh, they paid attention and they, they learned fundamental football. Coaches have done a great job and uh, I think that's the key thing that the leadership of the top two classes uh, and, the, and the contribution they made to getting Hus Husky football back to not just a competitive basis because we were competitive in 88. We had uh, 11 extremely close games but uh, to get to a point now where you're, you're maybe you're averaging three touchdown favorite on, on most everybody in the league, that's, that's an incredible thing to have happen in this league. Washington's offense averaged a Pac-10 best 472 yards per game, led by Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year, Mario Bailey. The Franklin High product established new Husky records for career touchdown catches and receiving yards and single season touchdown receptions. Junior offensive tackle Lincoln Kennedy earned the Morris Trophy, presented by vote of the players to the Pac-10's outstanding offensive linemen. A preseason All-America, Kennedy anchored a line that helped the Huskies rush for 232 yards per game. The most decorated Husky was junior defensive lineman Steve Emptman. He won the Lombardi and Notland Trophy Awards and was a consensus All-America and a Heisman Trophy finalist. He became the first two-time Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. Emptman also earned the Morris Trophy as the Pac-10's outstanding defensive lineman for the second straight season. Coach Don James guided Washington to the Pac-10 title for the fifth time during his 17-year tenure in Seattle. For the second year in a row, James was named the Pac-10's Coach of the Year. He was also named National Coach of the Year. Ahead, his 10th postseason victory when his Huskies met Big Ten champion Michigan in the 78th Rose Bowl. The Huskies return to Pasadena in search of a victory over Michigan and the first national championship in school history. The Dean of Pac-10 coaches started a sophomore quarterback in this game for the second straight year. This time, Billy Joe Hobart, a confident leader who was 11-0 as a starter. They would battle for the national title, Michigan and its Heisman Trophy winner, Washington and its Lombardi and Outland Trophy winner. The Husky defense set the tone early. Donald Jones dropped the Wolverines' Elvis Gerback for a six-yard loss on Michigan's first drive. Jones had three tackles, all for loss. The Husky defense smothered Heisman winner Desmond Howard, held him to one catch. Shane Palakoa broke up this pass. Walter Bailey picked it off. Mario Bailey set up Washington's first score with a 34-yard reception late in the first quarter. Bailey caught six passes for 126 yards. Hobart broke a scoreless tie on the first play of the second period. His two-yard plunge put the Huskies in front, a lead they would never relinquish. Tight end Aaron Pierce had his best day as a Husky, seven receptions for 86 yards. This grab set up the Huskies' next score, a 24-yard field goal from place kicker Travis Hansen, the first of two he had kicked this game. He split the uprights to give Washington a 10-7 advantage. Michigan threatened late in the first half, but Washington's defense took charge. Co-MVP Steve Etman, who'd missed three practices and spent time in the hospital with the flu, stalled this drive. Second half, Hobart marched the Huskies to another scoring drive. The game's co-MVP found freshman Mark Bruner from Aberdeen in the back of the end zone. He towed the line for six. Billy was supposed to roll to the left, and I was supposed to be out in the flat on the left, and it turned out to be a broken play, and then I adjusted back to Billy, and then he stopped and he looked right at me, and I looked right at him, and then we just, we just made a connection and we scored. It was just great. The Huskies added to their lead when Aaron Pierce caught this two-yard pass from Hobart. It was 27-7 Washington early in the fourth quarter. Linebacker Jaime Fields unloaded on Michigan tailback Jesse Jones, a monstrous hit. The Wolverines turned the ball over on downs the next play. And Mark Brunel, the Husky starter and Rose Bowl MVP a year earlier, fired a 38-yard touchdown strike to Mario Bailey, who struck a very familiar pose. 
The Husky defense recorded 13 tackles for loss, six quarterback sacks, limited the Big Ten's best offense to 205 yards. Washington 34, Michigan 14. I think their defense is better than I thought it was. After playing them on the field, I think they're a better defensive football team than I thought going in. And going in, I thought they were good. That's a good defense we've ever played since I've been anywhere. Notre Dame's not even close to, even Florida State's not even close to this team. Washington's a great team. They should be the national champ. You would have never dreamed it would come out this way. 200 yards to 400 yards, uh, you know, 10 to 19 first downs, uh, everything at the well, we, had, we, we really won the third down game, and I think that's that's something we played well in all year, and that was a real critical part of it. We were a little slow to start, but once we got rolling, man, they didn't know what we were doing. You know, they, people get so confused. We bounce the run and pass so well that you just don't know what's going to come at you, and, and it was a beautiful game. We came out the second half, we performed a little more. I performed a little bit better, and uh, we put on sevens instead of threes, and I think that was the key. But I don't really care what the boulders think. We just went out and played. I wasn't feeling real good. I didn't have any burst. I couldn't really run the ball well. My legs were, were jello most damn the day. Doesn't matter, we won and we're number one now. The Huskies celebrated the first unbeaten season in modern history and were crowned national champions by the USA Today CNN Coaches Panel. It capped the perfect season for the 1991 Washington Huskies.